yeah, yeah, I think we're, I keep spitting little, um, oh, yay, we've got some live chat as well, I've just seen it up on the, here we go, morning Deborah, yay, morning Vicky, Vicky, thank you for your help on that, I had no idea about that screen lock, so um, I've switched it off. Oh, it's still not streaming in landscape. Is it all all right on your um, screens? Can you let me know? Um, hi, Kate. Have we, um, could you just let me know how it looks on your screen? Is it the right way round and that kind of thing? Perfect, brilliant, thanks, Emma. Right, oh, so happy World Embroidery Day. I'm super chuffed that people are joining us. Um, I had a bit of a false start, as you know, <laughs> if you were here before. So, um, hi, Greech. Is that how you pronounce your name? Um, I, I, that's how I pronounce it when I see it. But hi, it's not just us after all, is it? We thought it was just going to be us two at the 10 o'clock one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, World Embroidery Day. I've got my embroidery here. Um, I can just about see on the screen, there's a slight satellite delay, I can just about see what I'm doing and what I'm showing you. Um, I've got my little reference cards to talk through. I'm just going to sit and stitch here today and talk about how, how I start stitching and um, morning Vicky West Green. Hi Cathy! Who else have we got here? Hi Marie! Oh from France, that's exciting! Excellent. Oh, like Grace. Excellent. Grace, that's a lovely name. Lovely name. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's, um, it's a bit of a welcome to my world thing today, where, um, and unfortunately in my world, there are um, often a few expletives, a little bit of flapping, and um, quite a lot of rummaging. So <laughs> I'm just gonna, I think this film is going to, um, I think it's gonna record and save on YouTube for people who want to watch it later. So um, I'm just going to set a bit of context. Hi, Joanna, I'm so pleased you're here. Have you started the painting on your, on your piece from Haven? sitting there doing that today so lovely to know that everyone is sort of sitting here doing their stitching or knitting hopefully in the garden if it's nice it's lovely weather here um so yeah i'm just doing some i'm just going to do some stitching i'm going to talk you through sort of how i start a piece when i'm going to start my embroideries and how i think about doing them and that kind of thing um but yeah just for context this is World Embroidery Day on the 30th of July 2020 with um, pretty much all of us come out of lockdown but there are some restrictions which means that getting together in a group at the moment probably isn't a great idea. So um, we're just, um, there's a group of us just connecting here on YouTube to um, stitch in our own houses or gardens and um, spend some time together on this day and I think we all feel that embroidery is something that kind of helps to keep us calm gives us a bit of me time makes us feel like we can relax without sitting there doing nothing um, kind of lets you sit guilt-free because you still feel as though you're being productive oh we've got we've got Jill here who um, is on here is Otto. She's stitching in her garden in Little Houghton. That's lovely. Oh, I've got loads of people and Kim has joined. That's so, oh, it's so great. And we've got Jeanette here from Anglesey. Oh, it's lovely. So the chat's on there. Please, you know, talk to me, ask any questions if you like, um, talk to each other. And, oh, we've got Ali. Do you know Ali? I knew that was you before I even saw your name. I could see your, um, little yoga lady sitting there. <laughs> um, right, so I've got my glass of water, I've got myself all set up and this is what I do. So before I start embroidering, I get myself set up with a drink. I have um, all of my needles. So I've got a bit of a selection of needles here, different sizes that I might need. Um, I've got another pin cushion just because I super love this pin cushion. I've got my scissors, I've got um, a bit of practice I was doing just before 
just before we came on here in case I forgot how to stitch always a possibility slightly worried that I was going to come on here and then forget how to do a lazy daisy as you do and then I've got some um, I've got some bits of linen on here to talk as well oh here we go and we've got Deborah on here winding yarn have you got one of those swifts <laughs> I um, went to Cornwall without a swift and had to make Andrew hold my yarn in his hands um, and he didn't do it properly he kept relaxing because it took too long for me to wind it and then it was getting all tangled that was not a good day for our marriage when we were winding yarn oh yeah we've got Angela here hi hi Ali home bed mates lovely to see you Tully B hello hello oh there's lots of us here so um I am, I'm actually going to go off and rummage. So I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me doing this. It's, I'm gonna come back on at two o'clock um, and then again at seven o'clock today. And um, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start stitching. I've got some notes here to show you, talk about the linen, but I just need to go and get another four inch hoop. So I'll be right back. You'll probably hear me go scuttling off. So, can you see, it's really weird, so I can only really see you on my, um, on my laptop next to me here, and that's where I can read um, your comments as well, so I'm trying not to get too distracted from those, but hi Anna, kisses from me and Lottie, hello, got Alice on here, have we as well? exciting so um when i said i was going to do this um stitching thing i thought maybe it might be a little bit interesting to um to know how i start thinking about my embroideries and that kind of thing and where i'm going to go with them so um i haven't really done any prep at all for today um because ordinarily i wouldn't i've just carried on the way that I do. So when I know I've got an embroidery to do, I kind of think about, um, I think about what sort of season it is. I think about what kind of thing I want to achieve. And I let that sort of tick along in my head. So there's kind of a lot of staring into space <laughs> for a while. And I wanted to skip that bit because I don't think staring into space is great on YouTube. <laughs> so um, I thought I'd just kind of skip to the part where I've got a bit of an idea about what I'm going to do. I've chosen the thread. I'd picked two skeins of um, embroidery th thread. So it'd be a really nice idea to um, just sort of challenge myself to stitch with just two, two skeins of thread. Um, and so that was the plan. And I've been having a little stitch with it, a little practice this morning. And um, it's kind of dark it's um it has got some so usually i've i've used these um variegated skeins of thread before um oh hang on hello anita oh lovely to have a cup of tea with you what's the weather like in the netherlands <laughs> and christina hi who else have we got here Anne marie um who has a blurry picture can anyone else help out do we have blurry pictures anywhere else do you know what as well i'm really hoping that um i can do this for an hour because i've not done a um, live stream before i swear i heard some rumors that it would only last for 15 minutes at a time um or something so uh if we get switched off after 15 minutes i'll go live with another link and put it in my instagram and um we can all start on gin it's never too early for gin is it <laughs> you can do an hour can you Vic? oh fabulous that's good instagram only 15 minutes fabulous fabulous we've got some clear pictures marie maybe it's your um maybe it's your connection marie oh this is nice this is like zoom but we don't all have to have our faces on the screen isn't it not like not that there's anything wrong with seeing everyone's faces on Zoom, but I don't really like having to sit. It's very distracting 
um, when you've got your own face on there, isn't it? You have to, it just turns into a mirror where you end up doing your hair the whole time. <laughs> Victoria, hi, good morning. So, um, yes, so I was saying, I was going to originally stitch with just these two skeins of thread. And um, when I was stitching with it today, I thought, actually, it is quite dark. So this is the one I'd opened, I'd opened up. And um, so I use this, I use variegated thread quite often. I put it in some of the kits because um, usually it's over dyed in a way that you can, you can chop where you want the thread to end. So you could chop here and have a darker piece. But there's actually, I like quite a lot of this sort of pale muted color. So whilst I do love all the colors in this skein, I think some of them are just gonna be a bit too hot for me with my stitching but I want to try and use it I know that a few people have um, bought these skeins as well and I don't want them to go to waste um, they remind me of the fruit salad sweets that we have um, or we did used to have in England um, when I was a kid I really like these colors and I think at this time of year it's nice to have <laughs> so Ali is sitting there with her hair in a towel turban that's um that's good. That's just what I was hoping that people would just, um, they can't stitch along, will just be there and say hi or they get along with their business. And Marie, brilliant, clear screen. Oh, so the DMC number that I've got, so this one, the skein, is 4110. Um, and it's, look, it's really pretty. Here we go. Can you see that? I'm sitting down so I can only see on my screen, my laptop, I can't see on my phone. Um, so it is a really pretty set of colours in this skein, but I was just, as I was just saying, they're kind of just small areas of each colour, which isn't massively helpful. So I did my first lot of rummaging and um, I pulled out a few other colours that I thought would work with this and get the sort of effect that I want. So um, I'll put them all out here because we all love a line of, yeah, it's pretty, isn't it? Home sweet home. Um, but I think it needs to be knocked back a bit with some lighter colors. So we've got 3770. I might not use all of these. And um, we'll just see how we go. 353, 951, and then I did think maybe 819, that's a bit of a favourite of mine. See, I could be sitting here faffing with colours for ages and ages and ages. 3774. I've got a white as well, just in case that, that looks a bit too bright now against all of those. 3866, that could work, but I may, I think this pink may be the best light colour for us to use. And we've got 754 there as well. So I think that's quite a nice little peachy set of colours that I'm going to have a go at using. So um, I'm going to start stitching with them today. And um, I'll start, I'll show you with my embroidery how I start and everything else. And um, yes, Grace, I will. I'll. Um, I will put the numbers on. I'll put them in the, um, <laughs> I've always wanted to say this, I'll put them in the show notes at the end. I hope I can do show notes because that sounds like a super YouTuber, doesn't it? I'll put them in the show notes at the end. Um, and also, if it, if it turns out nice, I will do it as a little downloadable pattern so you can pick up the threads um, yourself and have a go at stitching them. So... I've got an idea in my head of what I want to stitch. I've been thinking about the fact that, you know, it's summer. Morning, Mandy. Oh, you're painting, are you? Lovely. Morning, Jean. Nice to see you here. Yeah, Victoria, I like those colours as well. I thought I'd, uh, yeah, that's one of my favourite things, to have a little rummage around and choose colours and that kind of thing. Um, so now I'm going to talk about some sort of linen so I've had an idea in my head of what I'm going to stitch and then I sort of need to choose what kind of linen I'm going to stitch onto and um, I've 
got a few samples I thought I'd show you because um, I think most of you know that I mostly stitch on antique linen just because I really like the um, I really like the contrast between old and a bit shabby and the new kind of pretty embroidery and I also um, I just oh, I really ought to say um, I'm not I don't class myself as an embroidery artist I I don't see um, I mean obviously embroidery is art and some of it is absolutely beautiful um, but really for me embroidery is is more of an occupational therapy and I really like small small embroideries small details I like small illustrations and that kind of thing um, I I like it things to be a bit modern and fresh and I found this when I was sorting through my scraps the other day I've quite often got just little scraps of linen that have got these um, teeny tiny roses on and I just love that kind of thing so there's never anything groundbreaking with me I just love embroidery and oh Marie <laughs> thank you oh I'm sorry you miss England you wouldn't have missed it um, the other day when it was absolutely throwing it down a brain and really cold let me tell you so yeah with me you don't get um, you don't get super detailed, huge artistic pieces of work because that's not my jam to do myself. I love seeing it. I, you know, Chloe, Giordano, Trish, is it Trisha Burr or Trish Burr? I love, I love their work and I love to see it and really examine it. But the sort of, the sort of embroidery I like doing myself is always small and sweet and fresh and with lots of white space around it so it's a very long-winded way of saying don't expect too much today <laughs> um, so these are the types of linen we've got I always use pure linen um, and so that's why there's always a um, difference in color so it's very old some of it could have been bleached in the past I don't bleach any of it myself um, you can see here I've got a huge array of colours and um, it kind of, you know, if I was going to do something that was all white and I wanted some snow and that kind of thing to stand out, I may choose to do it on this really fine linen. Now, um, this is my absolute favourite to stitch on. Um, it's a really lovely beigey linen, I think cl quite close to its natural colour. I'm not an expert in linen at all but I'm starting to learn a bit more about it and I'll as I learn more and more I'll let you know and sort of share that knowledge with you um, but this is really fine it's quite rough it's not soft like cotton is it's got a sort of rough texture to it that's what I love um, this is softer I don't think it's got cotton in it. I think it's just a really worn linen um, but compared to the beige it's very soft then we've got this, which is more of a kind of beigey, greyish kind of colour. The colour you don't really want your white knickers going when you wash them, but I really like that as well. Um, we've got this sort of white slubby um, linen too. So there's lots, there's lots of different types of linen, and when you get your kits, you'll find you have different linen each time, but it's never a linen cotton mix. So it's never going to be super white, super soft, super floppy um because that's that's just not what i like to stitch on i like the contrast of um rough and frayed like with this um little pin cushion that we use i like frayed edges and i like really slubby linen and that kind of thing so i think with all these peaches i'm gonna have a look and see which might be the best one to go with um as I said, my favourite is this beige to stitch on, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're gonna pop <laughs> on that um, on that linen just the way I want them to. So I think I might go for this. I might go for this one. So I think they'll be nice. It's a nice little piece. 
I've got another piece here that I could use for the backing. These are all um, my linen off cuts from the kits. So um, they quite often have these little sort of rust stains and that kind of thing in them. Um, but I keep them all. I've sent some of these out this week um, as a freebie for people who um, who bought kits and or placed orders while we were on holiday. So hopefully, because I think even, you know, when they've got these little marks on, you can embroider over them, you can put the mark into your seam. There's, there's plenty to do with that. It still makes it super usable. So we're cracking on a bit, aren't we? Um, now, so I've got my thing, so, oh, I'm pleased you liked your freebie, Kate. Yeah, I hope you can use it. Um, my friend Linda has, um, she's done a really sweet little pouch where she's used lots of um, little squares and strips of linen. It looks really lovely in a little, pa little pouch like that. Um, Julia, can I, can I recommend where you can get similar linen? Yes, so um, from me, <laughs> um, sometimes I have linen bundles available for sale um, where I cut bigger pieces, they're not off cuts, they're not unusable pieces, they're, they're pretty perfect, so they haven't got stains on or anything. Um, but if you wanted to buy more and, and sort of have a look around and see who you can buy some from, um, I would recommend Claude at Maison Bleu La. I think that's how you pronounce it. She may be on here and tell me off, but I've, my French is um, bad. So um, she often puts some lovely bundles together. She sends from France, but she's very quick. Um, Lizzie and James at Honeysuckle and Roses, they occasionally get some um, really nice linen that they have for sale. You can buy a whole sheet and um, just sort of wash it and, and use it. Um, where else? Who else would I recommend? I'm really sorry if I'm not mentioning you. If there's anyone on here who does sell antique linen, um, pop your hand up, let us know. Um, who else do I get my linen from? I'm trying to think of actual sellers. I've got a private seller who I don't think sells direct to um, the public, so I won't mention her. Um, she gets me some lovely pieces. Yeah, Marie, I, st I just saw that, Joanna, that Marie said she got some linen sheets from her late great-grandmother. How amazing. And so lovely that you can stitch into them and make things that will maybe be more usable than the linen sheets are. Um, if I mean, if they're in perfect condition and that kind of thing, or you can put little patches on or little bits of embroidery, they are so beautiful to sleep under. Um, when Erica and I went to... Um, Demand de la Salle last year to do our workshop. Um, Marianne has um, furnished all the beds with old linen sheets and they were divine to sleep in. Absolutely beautiful. So, so I've been trying to find some really superb ones that I can have at home um, because in the hot summer with the hot weather and the windows open and a lovely old pure linen sheet, just heaven. So, um, yeah, beautiful. Um, let me think who else sells linen. As I'll think along as we go and I'll let you know who um, you can buy it from. I wanted to also to, um, I love your style too, Vicky, a bit of mutual appreciation here. Our colours, our colour palette and everything is so similar. Um, and I love that. I love, I mean, I do, I love bright colours, um, but I like bright colours to be knocked back a bit with some quite a few pale colours. I think this bright this bright one that we picked actually um oh trisha yes of course pop out and do your bits and pieces um i'm gonna be on here till 11 ish and um then i'll be back at two and hopefully i'll have done more than just pushing skeins around by then um and you'll be able to see them ali i can't wait to show you my index cards and tell you about the lady who told me about them amazing i'm super excited um, so yeah, I like to knock some bright colours back with a bit of um, muted pale and that's exactly what you do, isn't it Vicky, with your yarn? Just beautiful. So Trisha, have a good day. Um, I'll be on here at 2, British summer time, and 7pm. I'll probably be at home at 7, I'm at the studio at the moment. Um, but I don't like unlocking and locking the gates here. 
when everyone's gone home. So um, I'll be at home at seven. French linen and lace on Etsy. There we go. They've got some lovely linen as well. Um, so I'd recommend really buying bundles um, from people, from sellers and that kind of thing, and just seeing which sort of linen you prefer to stitch on. Um, and I have to say as well, I started off by stitching on um, new linen and I'm not, you know, I'm not averse to new linen and new cotton and that kind of thing. And in fact, I've just bought a huge roll of beautiful raw linen um, in a natural colour from Merchant and Mills. I'm going to have a little go of stitching some nice bits and pieces on that later. Um, but yeah, just, just buy what have buy a few little things if you can get scraps and that kind of thing you can you start to find what you really love and how you love the stitches um also while we're on the subject of linen um sometimes it's really nice to stitch onto quite a worn piece of quite sort of tatty linen and what i will do with that then is um i'll just put some stitchery stabilizer on the back which i use um an iron-on interfacing that you'd use for regular sewing and that kind of thing and it stabilizes the fabric stabilizes the linen um it gives you a firm if you're stitching over great big holes it gives you a firmer base to stitch on and um yeah it's it's perfect for making seemingly unstitchable pieces of fabric stitchable again so um i'm going to now tell you about my little index cards and these are the sort of sketches and bits and pieces that I do when I'm thinking about what I'm going to stitch as well so I kind of have in my mind what kind of thing I want to achieve what kind of look so um, my thought process today was it is high summer the flowers in the garden are kind of going over now but there are a lot of sort of bright dahlias or dahlias however you pronounce them a lot of bright dahlias in the garden and um, some of these really bright colors really pop in the sunlight so I thought as so I wanted to have a go with this skein of um, with brightly colored thread so I started thinking about what I was going to do I've got my um, little index card here with um, the plan for what it's going to do for the video so I've got my world embroidery day is a posy challenge. I thought just to try and make it easy for people, I'd just use two skeins of thread, which obviously that's changed. <laughs> that's changed now. Um, but this happens, you know, you think you're going to do something and it just doesn't work out when you start stitching with them. So we'll see how that goes. I'll try and keep the skeins down to a minimum so it's inexpensive and easy peasy to stitch. I wanted it to be small so that I could finish it by the end of the day. Um, and I really wanted to do just a little posy of flowers as a kind of gift. The sort of flowers you pick in your garden to give to a friend when you go for coffee. So, um, so what is it? I've got my three YouTube live streams. I am stitching a small floral motif from scratch and I'm using a limited colour palette. It's available to everyone and anyone. We're doing it live. Anyone can join. Um, and it will be recorded, I think, on YouTube later for people to see. Um, so in this first video, I was hoping to cover sort of stitches, answer some questions, um, draw out my pattern on the linen and that kind of thing. Hopefully by the video at lunchtime, I'll have done a bit more stitching, got a bit further with the embroidery. And um, then the evening class um, or the evening live stream Hopefully I'll be having a gin and tonic and I'll have nearly finished and we'll be able to talk um, about the embroidery if anyone's got any questions. I may add some little bits and pieces to it, give it some context and that kind of thing. So um, then on the back of this piece I, um, I drew my idea. So I'm thinking today we're going to do this, um, we're going to do just a little jug of flowers. I told you there's nothing. Um, I told you there's nothing groundbreaking here, <laughs> um, but this is just what I love. I love little simple um, things that relate to the home and the garden, and cozy, cozy little motifs are my thing. So, um, 
I thought we'd do this little jug and fill it with flowers. Um, I tried to sort of look at a bit of the composition here. Um, I really want it to look full and bursting with flowers. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and when I start thinking about how I'm going to do it, I, this is where I got to first. I'm doing this bit out of order, aren't I? Um, but I've got my, I knew I wanted to do a posy. I have been thinking about what kind of flowers I want to put in it, what sort of foliage. Um, when you're doing a, a bunch of flowers, you there's a, a kind of floristry rule that you use threes and fives and sevens, I think. Anna will be able to help me with this because she is a trainee florist. Um, but I think you have a bride flower, which is the star of the show. Then you have the bridesmaids that kind of tuck in around and just support that bride, but don't upstage. And then you have um, your periphery. So you've got your foliage and your grasses and that kind of thing. So that's what I try to think about when I'm doing my embroidery and what makes a pretty bouquet that I would buy in the shop. And, um, and then I start to think about what sort of thing I could put them into. So do I want them to be tied with a ribbon? Am I going to stitch that ribbon or am I going to do a couched piece of linen? Um, they're all options. Terracotta pots, clear glasses, pattern jugs, non-pattern jugs, vase shapes, all of that sort of thing. And on the back of here, I've got ideas of flowers for posies and that sort of stuff. So, um, and here's a little dahlia card that I've... Um, started doing of just the different types of dahlias that I could include. So, so I was really going along the thought process of doing dahlias for this one. Um, hi, Sonia. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Anna, I've got it bang on with my um, floristry terms. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is where I was going with it all. Um, I am just going to go off piece a little bit and talk about my little index cards. So all of this stuff ordinarily would be in a um, in a really scrappy notebook from, which is a hang up from my PA days where I would have um, all kinds of notes and lists and to-do lists I'd work through in a diary stroke notebook. Um, and I've never really found anything that works for me properly with my um, embroidery sketches and my ideas. And I really want to build up um, a bank of stitches and a sort of stitch library of different stitches you can use for different, different sort of flowers and that kind of thing. And um, I've been speaking about um, an art class that I've been doing online quite a lot on Instagram. And um, I haven't told anyone which artist I've been following with because I've just kind of wanted to check her out and make sure, because I only recommend people that I absolutely love and love everything they do. And I have fallen in love with Danielle Donaldson, it has to be said. So um, she's a Californian lady, um, or she's an American lady living in California. And she does some um, amazing, really bright colours, um, which is not really my thing, but the way that she mixes them and with watercolour, how she adds such a lot of... Um, she, sorry, I just keep getting distracted by um, chat. Things. So that's Emma. When I see a big one, I think, oh gosh, there's something awful happened. But um, yeah, I hope it's interesting. <laughs> because <laughs> I can chat, I chat too much and obviously all you can see are my um, jazz hands under here so um, I'm not quite brave enough to show my face on Instagram yet, on um, YouTube yet so, so hopefully it is interesting to talk about how I, how I get to this stuff. Anyway, Danielle Donaldson is um, an artist, an illustrator, she does a lot of mixed media, she does a lot of paper crafting and that kind of thing. And um, she, I've been following a lot of her um, workshops. So in my spare time, I quite often don't have time to paint along with her or draw along with her, but I do sit and watch her videos, which I love. So I bought a few um, classes. She's got a couple of books out. 
really recommend her. She's really whimsical. She does little houses on stilts with a coloured background and you can, as with anything, you can make it your own and use the pale sort of colours that you like. But um, one of the ways that she organises her practice is um, she creates recipe cards and I, I'm not going to tell you too much about them because this is her thing, this is her workshop to tell you and this is the kind of thing you need to check her out for. Um, but I think she covers these off in one of her books, so I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. She has um, recipe cards that she writes her illustrations on, so she might do an illustration of a, a really whimsical snow globe that she then fills with seasonal little illustrations and paints, and they're beautiful. And she, so that she's got a bit of inspiration when she's really not feeling it, and she wants to create, but she's not in the right place to know what to draw or paint or whatever. She has some little prompts for herself. And um, these, she uses these little index cards that, for her own practice. And I just thought, I love them. I love the whole paper crafting thing. I love the idea of having, you know, I was going to have a stitch book. We, we do our journals and we fill journals with different stitch ideas. But I want something where I can take the piece away. And I can, you know, when I'm thinking of a, doing a piece of embroidery, I've got my my different prompts and inspiration and everything else. So I've got this old, really old um, little drawer from Lizzie and James at Honeysuckle and Roses. I've got a few of these. And they have, they've had samples of the hardware on the front of them. Um, and I've made my own little recipe cards, exactly like Danielle's, check her out, to um, start putting all of my um, ideas and stitches on. So. Every time I do a film or some sort of live broadcast, I will be able to have an index card for it with all of my info on it and the things I want to cover off and what I want to make sure that I do. Um, I will have some different cards for sketch ideas. You know, my sketchbook is bursting and I've got maybe five sketchbooks on the go that I slip into bags and that kind of thing. And um, I forget what I've got and I know that I've drawn something I know I'll see something and think, oh, I know I've drawn a little image with a robin on it, but it's in one of my books. And so to have all of those sketches and those ideas sorted by seasons and flowers and that kind of thing, it's Danielle Donaldson. Do you know, what? I'm going to type it in here. There we go. And I'll put her in the... Um, show notes afterwards so um definitely check her out because um super inspiring it's a lovely bit of paper craft and um you can to make these little tabs is um basically i've been fiddling about with um watercolors and just trying out um mixing up the colors and um, mixing them with water and painting strips chopping them up and sewing them onto these um papers so, and that's the kind of thing you can do if you just want to do something a bit crafty and you're um, not feeling it. My friend Lou was going off, um, she's on holiday at the moment and she wanted to take her watercolours but didn't feel that she's in the right place for creating a masterpiece at the moment. And actually, if you look at Danielle Donaldson, she has got so many um, little, little things you can do with watercolours to... Um, get you practicing with them, trying out the colours, um, and you can spend the whole day with watercolours without actually painting anything. Um, <laughs> Vicky, yeah, you have to check her stuff out. Um, so beautiful, so whimsical, and um, really makes watercolour accessible. So if you've been buying watercolours to do um, some of this linen work that I've been doing in the kits, um, and you want to practice and have a go with some watercolours, just try Danielle out and see um, see what you think of her work. There's something there for every single level. And she teaches you how to draw as well. So I've been going through some perspective stuff on one of her classes too, which is uh, which is great. So they're, they're my little cards. I really should get stitching because we're 39 minutes in and there has been no stitching on a piece of linen because I chat too much and I rummage too much. So. 
I've got Drew, who's just popped out from um, the office to come and see what we're doing. Say hello, Drew. Hello. <laughs> He's having a look at the chats and that kind of thing that everyone's... We've got 83 people oh, here. Wow, that's good. That's good. And there's all the name. chat looks. Yeah, we've got Anna, is it, Sonia. Is yeah. it Grinch, yeah? Yeah, you pronounce it Grace, like Grace, oh, apparently. Oh, just, right, okay. So that's, yeah. Oh, look, Ali's on. Oh, look. We've got my um, masseur. <laughs> oh, look, who's this? Someone's called him a dick. Oh, that's, that's, not, that's not very nice, is it? Oh, was, Dick. Oh, no, that's Dick. That is Dick. That's someone called Dick. Yeah, not calling me. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm off. <laughs> Sorry, Dick. I thought... I thought you were calling Drew. <laughs> oh, dear. So, do you, know, do you know Dick? No, I don't. Oh, we've got someone new here. Hello. Joanna's saying hello. Joanna's laughing. I'm going to move on. Andrew's doing... Um, those, you know, cutthroat size. <laughs> oh, Grace was on her husband's iPad. That's what it was. Her husband did yeah, say. Your sister, is that your sister? Is she laughing at me yeah, as well? Yeah, Sarah's laughing as well. Yeah, oh, laughing. my oh, God. Right. My goodness. Right, okay. He's just, going back. Go back to you. Always the entertainment work. on your videos. <laughs> oh, dear. He just came, out, just came out to check on me. So, um, we're at the studio today, and um, he... He has a proper job working for a bank. Joe, hi! Jolene, I'm so pleased you're on there. Hello. Um, we're in the studio today and I've got my big space where I've got my um, well, my threads and my stuff and it's lovely and airy. And then um, it has got a little separate office with the computers and printers and that kind of thing in there. So um, just for me and Drew and my sister, Sarah. And uh, so he's in the little office with the door shut and... Uh, <laughs> There's a window that looks out into the studio and he puts a little post-it note in the window when I can't get in. It's almost like one of those red on-air lights, um, but way less tech. So, <laughs> oh, Marie, don't let, your, don't let your lunch burn. I'll still be here waffling about nonsense when you finish doing your, um, doing your lunch. Um, so, yeah, he's gone back in the back in the office and there's a post-it note on the window so he's obviously on an important call <laughs> so I've got my um, little design that I'm going to do I am actually going to put it onto the linen um, I was thinking of showing you how I um, how I transfer these onto my linen I usually just use the um, the tracing paper method so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, this is going to fit in a four inch hoop. So, um, yeah, hi, I don't know who Orchid 71 is, but hi Orchid, yes. It does make you want to experiment with your watercolours and um, it's loads of fun. All of these little um, bits and pieces on my cards are all from um, experiments that went wrong and there's splodges on them and uh, blooms of water that you're not really like this. You're not really supposed to have um, a big splodge of water that falls into your paint, but Danielle encourages you to try that and um, see what kind of effects you get and everything else. It's just so much fun. You, it's so beautiful. Um, so what I'm going to do, I will show you later. I'll do that jug later and I may applique it. I don't know if I'm going to stitch it. Uh, I like things to look quite light and, um, and not too heavy so I don't think I will stitch that whole thing but I might do when I come to it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put some little have I told you what flowers I'm doing on here yet <laughs> I don't think I have so I'm just gonna sort of draw the spaces where I think I'm gonna so this this is a um, friction pen so um, you can remove it with heat which is either you can press your work with an iron which removes it but if it's something you don't want to squash um, with an iron um, you can use a hairdryer so that will remove the lines as well um, but do take care with them because they're not completely infallible is that a word um, they do they do come back in the cold so if you if you draw something and um, you want to see it again because you've removed it with heat you can put your work in the freezer and it will come back. So um, 
children, oh, look, I'm waffling again, but I can't help it. Children um, were apparently writing themselves, writing each other notes with these friction pens, and then, because they rub them out with the little thing on the end. And um, parents were finding out, there's a disco bus going by by the, by the sounds of it outside. <laughs> um, children would write each other notes and um, rub them out, secret notes, and then their parents were putting their notes in the fridge. So they could see all the naughty words like poo and bum that they'd put in their letters, which makes me laugh. Um, yes, Kate, you can iron um, a finished project. I iron lots of them. So what I suggest doing is um, turn them over and press them on a um, fluffy towel because that helps to prevent the stitches from squashing too much. Give it a good iron. I use a bit of steam as well, although you don't want it to get too wet. And um, and then let it set. And then when you turn it round, if it's um, if it's a bit squished and some of your stitches are a bit squished, you can spray them with water, a tiny bit of water, and just pick them. Yeah, Joe, can you hear that music? <laughs> There's a disco bus outside. I like to think. Um, I am in the same building as um, two gyms. Uh, there's an artist here. There is a clothing maker so not a clothing company they make clothes by hand they're moving in tomorrow um we've got um, a recording studio here as well so um yeah it's, it gets super noisy oh and there's a guitar um school too so it's so nothing like my old studio in the countryside but i do love it i like hearing a bit of bit of life going on outside um yes alex to get rid of grubby marks on your work um you can i quite often use um little um baby wipes so this is my um sewing bag that i've been using at the moment it's a bit scruffy it's one of those gus bags that's got all of the pockets and the little cubes and everything in um but i always have um a little packet of wipes these are antibacterial ones at the minute for obvious reasons um but you can use the pink baby wipes by johnson's for some reason especially are really good at removing um, grubby marks because I guess what you mean is um, quite often you'll have a ring around where your hoop's been you'll have a ring around that um, that's like a grubby mark and it's really quite distracting from your work so um, to get rid of those you can use um, your baby wipe or you can hand wash your work as well. If you're using my kits, I use DMC thread, purely for the reason that they're completely colourful, so you can wash them, you can embroider things onto um, clothes and that kind of thing, and cushions, and they're not going to, they're not going to bleed onto the fabric. Some of the really beautiful over-dyed threads that we use, um, and that a lot of artists use for their embroidery, um isn't colour fast and i've had work that i've done bleed onto the linen just with a drop of condensation from a glass so um you need to be careful with those and soak them before you use them really but also to prevent getting those grubby marks from the hoop in the first place um you're best to bind your hoop with um i'm gonna go off and rummage you're best to bind your hoop with a piece of cotton tape and I have been doing that lately, but it's really quite time consuming and I haven't done it with all of my hoops. So I'm just going to go and find one. I wonder if you can still hear me while I'm rummaging around and I'm into. Here we are. I should have um, just gone to my little stash of hoops and stuff. Um, oh, Fiona! Of course, it's. Fi oh, you managed to. Um, manage to hide and get on here yeah wrap your hoops with these um with this first as well because that that helps to prevent those grubby marks so this is just um apron tape and i've actually just put a dot of um glue at the top wrapped it around and then a dot of glue here and i do both i think you only really have to do the bottom one because it helps to keep your fabric taut as well but i like to um I like to wrap the outer one as well to stop those oil marks from the wood getting onto it. And also, um, you get grubby marks from it going in your bag. And Fiona, I know that you take your stitching everywhere. Um, guys, Fiona has, um, 
she goes off to the theatre um, in London quite a lot. And I think um, this is your Who Pally, isn't it? It's the one you use when you come. <laughs> I think Fiona has done a three day, a three, not three day, a three play Shakespeare thing, haven't you? Where you've sat in an open air theatre watching three back to back Shakespeare plays whilst stitching a stitchery sampler. Yeah, she does. She's amazing. She's very. Very funny, very cool. She'll sit there with her wine and her stitching and um, fit in wherever she is. So I love that. Yes, yeah, so um, baby wipes. Right, I've got, um, we've been going for 49 minutes. I may run over because I just want to get started with some actual embroidery before we go. Yes, <laughs> I knew, I knew, I remember thinking that three Shakespeare plays back to back is pretty tough going. So um, taking, taking the, um, taking your stitching there, just brilliant idea. I wish I could have taken my stitching to Shakespeare plays when I did them, um, for my English A-level when I was, went to see them. Ugh. So I'm drawing on my little um, circles and I was originally thinking of doing dahlias for this, but I want the um, motif to be quite small. And dahlias, typically the dahlias that I like, are really big. Um, so, and I didn't want them to overpower. I want to get the sense of a lot of flowers, it's kind of from the garden, shoved into one vessel. So I'm going to stick with my trusty favourite, which is roses. Roses are my favourite flower in real life and, um, and in stitching as well. So, um, and I can't resist a jug of garden roses on my kitchen table. So, um, the Kaiser Chiefs too, <laughs> that's amazing. How did you see your stitching be at the um, Kaiser Chiefs gig? Because them places are dark, man. Did you wear a head torch? Because I have been known to wear a head torch in bed to do my stitching, which is not one of my sexiest moments, but it got my embroidery done when I was on a deadline. <laughs> Maybe um, head torches at um, gigs would be, could be like a new thing. Like, you know, people used to wear those um, high-vis vests at raves and stuff. Maybe it's sort of on the workman chic thing. So I'm gonna start with, um, <laughs> I'm gonna start with this sort of brightly colored thread because I do want to have some, um, some bright colours in. We can knock it back with the lighter ones later. Um, so I'm just looking at the thread to see which section of colour I want to use first. So I think I'm going to cut here where it's a really dark peach, corally kind of peach, really pretty. And um, I'm going to end where it goes quite pale. So so that I've got the two colours in there, I've got quite a short piece of um, linen you can see there <laughs> struggling to hold it um and i think what i'm going to do with this is um it looks perfect for a woven rose so i'm going to tie the knot in this dark end and um <laughs> i am going to be ruining marriages and partnerships all over our stitching community as we all go to bed in head torches this evening <laughs> sexy so, um, but yeah, it's great. It's great when it's dark and you can really see what you're doing. I'm gonna tie the knot in this dark end here, which means that the first stitches I do are gonna be this dark end. And then that will be the center of the rose. And then hopefully it will move out towards the edge of the rose with this lighter piece of thread here. So um, to do a woven rose, I've shown this before, so I'm really sorry if I'm telling you things you know. I um, usually show them on a kit as a circle and I do a star shape, a five spoke star. And I would draw that, that would be on your kit like that. So I'm gonna do it with maybe three strands of thread. This, um, I'm using a number seven needle, just grabbing that out of my pin cushion. That's a nice, um, the smallest size you can get away with with three strands of thread really um, get that 
Right, so this isn't a tutorial, obviously, and I've decided that this piece of thread is not big enough to fill a rose that big. Um, so I'd start in the middle with the dark, and I want it to finish with the pale colour on the end, and it's not going to work like that. It's too short. So I'm going to have to do a smaller woven rose. So I'm going to do my little woven rose here instead, so that I can put this colour in. So I'm starting with the top spoke and do the next two um, become let's do it in a kind of Y upside down Y shape because it help you to remember how to do it yourself so a five spoke star try to get the spokes quite even around the center Sarah, if you're still on here, my sister, please will you reply to my texts? I've been texting you since last night about mini breaks and you haven't replied. So if you, <laughs> if you do that, please. It's an ideal place to nag you. So, um, here we go. So we've got five spokes. And then um, I'm going to do my... So that's really quite dark for those spokes there, isn't it? I could have used a different colour really to make sure I still got this dark one in the centre. And then you weave over and under those spokes. Keep pull them quite tight in the centre. Can you see? I think most people know how to do these woven wheel roses. And I have got some old videos on here that show you how to do them. Um, but you're just starting in the centre and going around them so this colour is working quite nicely so far I love this peachy coral colour I really love it um, but it's just too much with all of it a go-go isn't it so I'm going to keep going around the edge Oh, you have, have you, Sarah? Well, I've been so excellent. I um, messaged my family this morning to say, please don't ring me or text me because I'm doing a live broadcast. I felt very fancy saying I was doing a live broadcast. Um, but please don't text me because last time I was doing a film, I said this to my family and um, my mum rang me. She pays no attention to me whatsoever. Lives in her own little world. And uh, yeah, just rang me halfway through which um, was most annoying. And I did say only ring if it's for an emergency. And um, it, let me tell you, it wasn't an emergency. So going round. So I'm really liking how this little rose is looking. It's a nice little fat one because I'm using three strands of thread moved up. Quite a nice little fat rose. Um, I'm going to fill this um, area with little fat roses, hopefully, and just keep going. So you can see, you can't see any of the um, spokes anymore, um, but I'm still going to keep going. So you wiggle your, you know, sort of where or whereabouts these spokes are. So just wiggle your needle underneath and keep going. And I try to keep the stitches a bit loose towards the edges of these flowers because then you get like a loose petal around the edge. There we go. I'm going to have to bring it down so I can see. There we go. And uh, also, part of the process is you look at things and you think, oh my goodness, that's rubbish. That's not going to work. Um, and the key is to just keep going with things because um, you can stitch over the top of things, you can put things, little French knots up against things, you can cover up little mistakes, you can do things with them that make them very pretty and your own work. So there you go, waving it under the end there. Oh, we're on to 59 minutes, so... I'll um, have a look at doing another stitch. So that was with the 
four double one zero thread where I cut the um, cut the skein to get the right colour. And so now I think for one of the middle ones, I um, I think I'm going to use this. So this is a peachy colour. I think it goes really nice with. Um, it goes really nice with that, doesn't it? So it's kind of the same brightness, the same sh sort of level of brightness, um, but it doesn't have the unpredictable variegated colours in it. So um, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do that rose there, little woven rose. And then I'm going to let everyone get on, get back to their days after this. And um, you can come and join me on here again at two. And hopefully there'll have been a lot less chit chat, a lot less rummaging, and I'll have actually managed to knuckle down and get some embroidery done by then. Um, but there's no telling because obviously Drew is in the house. <laughs> I love saying cheesy. Um, <laughs> I love saying cheesy young people sayings. Being a you know almost middle aged floral dress wearing uncool person make myself laugh um brilliant thank you kate i'm so pleased that you're on here and to have a crochet guru um doing my stitching and um enjoying it and enjoying embroidery is amazing it makes me so happy so thank you for joining oh jean I know, I wish you were here with me. We've, there's quite a bit of room actually in the studio. We could all sit in here if we were allowed to see each other and do a bit of stitching. It's bigger than my old place. Um, so yeah, I'm going to crack on with this. I'm going to do another woven rose here. If you're coming back at two, um, there may not be any woven roses at all. I may stitch them and think, Forget this, I'm starting again. Blow this, as my nan would say, I'm starting again. Um, but hopefully, 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 I'll have got some more done with it and be able to show you how it sort of comes together. Um, so thank you guys. I will see you at two if you want to join and um, have a lovely day. And thank you, thank you for chatting here on, um, on the chat box too. It's really nice to um, connect and catch up and I've missed everyone so much you know I've been really busy over lockdown um, but we haven't seen anyone's actual little faces so um, it's just really nice to talk and to have a bit of a catch up it feels like we might be getting a little bit back to normal somehow so I will see you at two and I'll crack on with your stitching and if you come back I'd like to know if you have been productive with your own stitching um, thanks Emma and take care and see you later. Bye! <laughs> Can't help my jazz hands. Oh, I've got to switch off up here. I think these are the bits that get cut on actual real films, aren't they? <laughs> right, bye! No. Sorry, now I see I'm doing it again. <laughs> but you know those people who, when they put the phone down, they say bye, and then you say bye, and they go bye, 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 bye. Feel like that's what I'm doing here. Bye, 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 bye. Oh, I've got to press it to end. Okay, bye, bye.